Hello and welcome to another month of the Power BI Monthly Digest. My name is Devin Knight. I'm Matt Peterson. And uh, this is the month of February where we have some kind of minor updates, some additions to new, uh, new preview features that have come out in the last couple months and things like that. But we're excited to share with you some of these features. Of course, always at the end of the video, let us know below what's the things that you're most interested in. Uh, but first, let Matt tell us a little bit about the first feature. So we're going to be looking at something that had that came out in December, preview, right? Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In December, you were able to now connect to your data sets, the Power BI shared data sets, uh, as well as Azure Analysis Services, and have it as a direct query. Right. Uh, now, what you can do is something you couldn't do in December is actually go and delete that direct query in your data source settings. So gotcha. a little bit of a minor update. So we'll show you where to go and how to. If you put it in there, like I want it out, how can you get rid of that? All right, let's take a peek. All right, so we have one of these in here already. And so in order to do this, you're always going to go to your data source settings under transform data. And once we are there, we then go into our data source settings. And as it pops up, you can now see that we have this direct query from one of our Power BI data sets. And I now no longer want it to be part of this model. So I'm just going to do a right click and delete. And it says, are you sure you want to delete this data source? Yes, we are. And that is one of the quick fixes uh, that they've changed in order with our direct query. Now, while we're here, the other really cool thing that I like that they've added is this search bar at the yeah. top. Good, let's go ahead and show this now, you're right. This is awesome. So when you come on in and you just select on it, it's going to give you suggested actions. And so oftentimes we're looking for a button we might have forgotten where it is or just want some extra information. Like I wanna know how to make a column. So if I start typing in column, it's going to give me all these actions related to it. And so I could click on new column and it would make a column for me. Uh, so this is great, especially for people who are just learning the program. They can now have this kind of nice little wizard, so to speak, that's trying to guess what you're what you're trying to do. Apart from that, it's also intuitive. Like if I have an actual uh, visual selected here, so I'll take this uh, column chart that we have. Now I go back into the search ribbon. Notice that we have different things now. Now we have different suggested actions. Hmm. So it's all based on where you're at. So for example, if I click uh, visual table, we will see that it takes me to the table view of that actual visual itself. Nice. And then we can go back to the report. So it, it's really nice, I think. It's great to have it at the top. It's one of those nice Microsoft add-ins kind of to uh, kind of make you feel welcome to the program and maybe right. not as... Uh, Overburden if it's your first time using it. Yeah, if you're like we've talked earlier off off camera, when if you're new to the product and you're just trying to learn, like where do I go find how to do some small little feature? I can go search up there and really find things a lot easier. So that's that's a great yeah. feature. Uh, the next one's a pretty small one too, right? So they made some changes over time recently to the diagram view, the model view, and how the tables appear in the diagram. Uh, and now they've made some small change to kind of sync it up with the theming. Yeah, so in the model view, they, they updated. Well, let's just actually show yeah. it. It's easier to see here. So we'll just go down to our model view. And in, uh, I think it was November or December, they put in the, the change where, based on what you have brought in, your data connection, you have different iconographies as well as some coloring. So direct queries have the solid blue. If it's imported, there is no color. If you're in dual mode, you've got the slashes all the way through. And then based on your different sources, the colors will change. Now, what they have added here is not a huge deal, but if you go back to your report view, and I'm going to make a crazy theme color change. I'll go to the purple here. Your favorite. Oh, yeah, I love blue. <laughs> when we come back to our model view, notice what is now different. Okay. We have some colors. So uh, the only drawback, not a drawback to it, thing to keep in mind is if your theme has a lot of white to it, they will not try to make these bars white. Uh, they will keep it in the standard default colors. And again, this is an option. This is a preview feature. So if you want to see this, you do have to go to your options and settings and turn the new model view preview on. Gotcha. Well, while you're here, it probably makes sense to go ahead and show the next feature here. So the next feature is, uh, and by the way, this is still in preview, right? Isn't Correct. Right okay. Still in preview. So the other uh, preview feature that came out a couple months ago was also having to do with the field list that you're showing right now on the right-hand side. And so it's still in preview, but they've made some additions to the preview to enhance it or extend it a little bit more. So tell me about that. Yeah, well, first off, just I think it's easier to read your field names when they made this new change. I think the, the typography is easier to read and they changed the iconography, whether you're looking at a, a measure, a date column um, or a numerical column. And previously, you could only see this in the model view. However, now you can actually see this in your data view. So if we go to the data view, we'll see the same iconography that we nice. were. 
So they've just updated this. So it's now in the report view, model view, and your data view. Nice. Yeah, that's a, it, again, these are small little things, but still pretty helpful to the overall usability of the tool, right? I agree. Um, so the next feature, which again, is a feature that had was come out, came out in the past as a preview feature, it's still in preview, but they've made some additions to it. This is the small multiples feature. This is actually a really highly requested feature, uh, especially for those that come from other data visualization products where they've been able to do this in the past. So this feature to create small multiples, other products might call it, call it facet, where you can fat, you can mm -hmm. facet by, and you can facet by another product or another uh, category. Um, small multiples. So they've made some additions to it, some changes to it, some enhancements. Tell me about it. Yeah, because the main thing they wanted is to have that small multiples out there. So you could take your visual and then have it broken down by a certain metric or certain right. category. Uh, and then people wrote in and said, hey, there's some changes that I would like for you to make. And they all come around the formatting changes for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so you can change the background, you can change the way the lines cut off your multiples differently. So it's more of a, a visibility feature, so to speak. Gotcha. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look. So we'll come on over to our small multiples preview. And so again, the small multiples preview is only for certain visuals. Uh, and you know what, let's get rid of our beautiful bloom here. We'll <laughs> go back to white and blue. <clears throat> and so when you have a visual that supports small multiples, the way you figure that out is if you come on over to your small multiples field in the visualizations pane. So that's how I know that it is supported. And all you're gonna do here is figure out how do you want this entire visual to be split out into different parts. So we'll just come over, I'll take our, uh, we'll take the year from our date field here. So we'll just take the calendar year and we'll drag it into our small multiples and notice mm. what we've got. We now see that we have been breaking this down by 2005, six, seven, eight, et cetera. So what, that's what you could have done already, but here's the new stuff. You can come on in and start formatting it. So if you come over to the formatting section in your visualizations pane, and then you're gonna come all the way down in here to your small multiple tile. And at first, this is just the basics that you could do last time. You could change the fonts, et cetera. But the new feature is under the grid layouts, you have the ability to change your background color. So let's, we got this nice white right here. So let's change it. Ooh, Ooh something what else. What we have now, this is the other update. Uh, and this one I really enjoy. I did not like the way that the color picker was. I thought everything was really smushed together. Uh, and especially if you had a small laptop screen, it was hard to see your color selections. Yeah. Now we've got a, a much bigger box. We have more of a breakout distinguishing between the colors and something that's been requested, we now can put in RGB codes. Nice. So before you could do the hex color, but now we can do RGB. So just a, let's see one here. We'll, we'll put an O in. I'm going to go with uh, a, a color here. Where are you going with this, Matt? Yeah, well, I got a great color lined up. You seem to let's, know exactly where you're going. Let's make sure that's the color I want. And we're and this is a gotcha, because at first I was playing around like, wait, what happened? But you got to change your background transparency <laughs> right now. So. <laughs> Let's I don't make know why it they less do that. transparent. Why do they have that? I, I don't know. Well, now yeah. it looks really awful. So I know my my columns don't look the greatest, but the reason I picked this color, this is a uh, Jaguars teal, right? Uh, and we now have the number one draft pick. Uh, so it looks awful because it is the Jaguars. It is, but that is <laughs> going to be old history. I promise. When we get Trevor Lawrence, we're gonna we're gonna be back in the game. I hope so. I hope so. The the three uh, Jaguars fans that are watching, my mom and your mom. Yep. Will really. Yep. <laughs> Well, and my grandmother, too. And your grandmother. She does watch this every month. Doesn't that's know what Power BI is, but she's proud of me. So. <laughs> well, cool. So uh, other than the Jaguars part, that's a great uh, addition. So some additional customizations that you now have available to you. Um, so the next feature that we're going to look at, though, has to do with another preview feature, or it was in preview. Is it still in preview, the anomaly detection? The anomaly detection, uh, I believe it's still in preview, but okay. they've added some updates. And, and what the anomaly detection was great for is finding anomalies. If you have large data sets right. and you're looking for something that's just odd, uh, we don't have to do the math. Power BI does the math for us and it will find those anomalies. And yeah. so one of the features that they changed is um, instead of, I believe it was six points that you had to have on the visual prior to this release, but now all you need is four points and the statistical analysis will do its, uh, okay. will do its work. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. And so just for a quick review, just in case you had missed out on anomaly detection from uh, last month November, or think, December yeah. or November. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, of there was no happens. update in January, so that confused some people. That right? is right. That's why I'm <laughs> thinking back. Um, so with the anomaly detection, when you have certain visuals that are supported, if there's anomaly detection, you would select your visual, 
come over into the visualizations and go to the analytics section. And then for here, this is where you have a dropdown called find anomalies. However, they have also added a new, not a new feature, new way to get to your anomalies. With the visual selected and you come up to the data drill, this is also, if your visual ah. supports it, you can just click find anomalies there. And then you don't have to go and manually find it because it automatically right. will default. <clears throat> and so basically you expand this down and you just start saying, how do you want it to be finding your anomalies? Right. And you set your sensitivity level. So let's say we bring in, let's see if we can see if there's any differences based on if there is an anomaly. Let's see if we can explain it by gender and by, let's go with English education. So I'm going to bring both of those in. And I'm going to bring both of those in. <laughs> let's see if it, there it goes. There and so go. of, as of right now, no anomalies at this high level. Now, do you because, need to apply to make that actually take effect? Um, actually, no, that, I think that's just with uh, our query in the background. Ah, okay, gotcha. So this is just using four years of data, nothing crazy out of the ordinary. So let's go down to the next level. Oop, let me actually go and bring in the years on it too. So still nothing, everything, if you look at the gray area, that's the expected range of mm -hmm. values that it thinks are, you know, acceptable. Yeah. And if we go down one more, okay, so uh, now we're at the, uh, the, the month level here. And when we have an anomaly, if we click on it, or actually we're at the, uh, the quarter level in the month, quarter and month, we click on the anomaly and it will then give us some possible explanations. Ah. Now this one says we couldn't find any significant explanations. Uh, and that's always going to change based on your sensitivity level. So the more sensitive, less sensitive, the more anomalies or the less anomalies that you will actually get. Gotcha. All right. So we learned a little bit there. That's kind of interesting to see how uh, that feature works. So one last kind of key feature that we're going to show a demo of, and then just a few topics here to yep. discuss. Uh, very small little addition to the mobile layout, right? So what they do in the mobile layout? Tell me. About just it. put those snap to grid lines basically on there so you can actually do the preview of it. Prior to that, it was hard to see if things were aligning correctly. Yeah. Um, unless you were really zoomed in. So they just added that feature so you can design it in the mobile view. Okay, well, let's take a look. Yeah, very quick here. So just <clears throat> you find the page that you want to put your mobile view on. And we're going to go to our view ribbon. And we're going to click on the mobile layout. And so this is where you get to customize the mobile layout, not just the pre-standard one that gets published out. And so now if I try to move a visual, notice right here, I'm seeing those red grid lines around it. So as I move, it's going to tell me, and if I resize, it helps tell me where it puts up centered-wise, if we're nudged up against something or mm -hmm. not. So that's really it. So just uh, for those people who like Ooh. to do the, yeah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not all big in on the mobile design as much, but uh, for those people, I know there's a lot that that is a key feature for them because yeah. they're always accessing it on the go. Uh, so just a few other features here to talk about. There's some new data connectors we'll talk about. There's also a feature that's gone into GA that some, I would say, probably more on the advanced Power BI side have mm -hmm. played around with. That's the uh, enhanced data set metadata format. So that gave you the ability to tap into some of those external tools like the tabular editor, uh, the uh, DAC Studio, how you had all that integration into uh, the Power BI desktop with those external tools. Um, a lot of people really like using the tabular editor to be able to create things like calculation groups and mm -hmm. modify things all from the tabular editor. So there's there's some benefits there. That's now become generally available. The the metadata model format has become a, uh, generally available. So all of that stuff, if you've been waiting for it to come out of preview, it is now out of preview, fortunately. So some good stuff there. And then we have really kind of three connections to briefly highlight. There's a new Teams analytics uh, mm -hmm. connector. So that I'm kind of interested to play around with that a little bit. Uh, there's a Snowflake, uh, what, there, there's been a Snowflake connector, but there's a Snowflake support for now. For the security roles, I believe. Custom the, roles? Okay. The custom roles, yeah. Gotcha. And then the last one, which we, we have actually seen quite a few people that are interested in uh, Azure Data Factory, mm -hmm. you might have been also playing around with things like Parquet files before, and now there's Parquet file support within inside of Power BI as well. Yeah. So really cool. Any, any, yep. what, what's your favorite for this month? Kind of curious. The parquet files. No, really? no, 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 no. <laughs> I like, uh, I, I mean, honestly, I like the color palette just because when we do our trainings and we're telling people to select certain colors, it's yeah. hard to zoom in. Uh, so I know that's going to make my job easier right. for training. But uh, other than that, I'm always like the anomaly detection. I'm a kind of a stats guy. So I think yeah. that's kind of interesting. You're, you're a math guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the search. I like the simple search thing. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Tell us what, what was your favorite feature from this month. A lot of smaller features, a lot of small enhancements to some things that came out in preview. Again, there was no update in January, so we mm -hmm. went a, a little month we skipped over here. But uh, still some good stuff that have come out this month. Of course, as always, make sure you follow us. Uh, continue to see some of the new videos that we're launching. We're launching a lot of new videos lately, uh, so make sure you're able to see those as they come in. 
And of course, comment below. Let us know what you care, what you're interested in, how we can uh, uh, change and modify and make these videos even more interesting to you. But other than that, we appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next time.